It's been a turbulent year for Zambia. From the death of Michael Sata last October to unplanned presidential polls in January and now an economic nosedive. Now it's mainly down to the malaise that's afflicted the mainstay copper mining sector. It's the second largest employer, accounts for more than 70% of GDP and a fifth of government income. With global prices rapidly weakening, the rest of the economy here is feeling the heat. The Zambian kwacha has depreciated more than 30% against the US dollar, making it one of the worst performing currencies this year. An energy deficit has seen 8 to 12 hour power outages per day. Zambia, criticized for years for its over-reliance on copper, should now plan on diversifying the economy. The citizens are having a feeling that uh, uh, Zambia is all about copper. Without copper, we are a dead nation. It's important that the government be begins to invest in industrialization, begins to invest in agriculture, and let us only consume that which we can produce. Mm -hmm. And to me, uh, this, I think, will go towards uh, more or less stabilizing uh, the economy and making it uh, less vulnerable to external forces. President Lungu has on Friday the difficult task of laying out plans to mitigate the damage and restore confidence in ordinary citizens that the economy can get going again. He has previously hinted at intervening to shore up the tumbling currency. Does the Bank of Zambia have capacity? The reserves have been out. So one is not sustainable, and two, there's no capacity. Borrowing from the IMFs of this world? I think we are drowned in borrowing. We have, uh, we, we borrowed on the international capital uh, markets, I think to the extent of, uh, in the last three years, almost four billion. Repaying those Jews could be difficult now that the country's biggest source of revenue, copper, is facing an uncertain future. Farah Mokutuya, CCTV, Lusaka, Zambia.